Luke chapter 8 from verse 41 to 48. We are discussing destiny defining encounters, encounters that transform. Follow carefully as we draw light and wisdom from this scripture. And behold, there came a man named Jarius. And the Bible says he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one only daughter, above 12 years of age. And she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman, part of the story now, a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. She came behind him and touched the border or the helm of his garment and immediately the issue of blood stanched. It stopped, ended. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitudes throng thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared unto him, before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately 48 final verse now and he said unto her daughter be of good comfort thy faith had made thee whole final instruction go in peace give us wisdom and understanding in the name of jesus christ so the bible tells us that the things that are written aforetime it says they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope everything that is written the bible says aforetime inspired by the spirit that it was written captured documented so that the saints can learn god the saints can learn the ways of god they can learn the principles of the kingdom hidden through stories hidden through parables hidden through events hidden through the lives of people are principles of the kingdom that can help the saints to know god to understand his ways are we together to draw light from those stories and then to walk in victory and this is one of such profound renditions so we'll see what we can draw from this tonight as it concerns having encounters and as it prepares us to become great vessels even for the use of the master number one men can touch god men can touch god in a way that radically changes the course of their destinies for good this is the first thing i want you to know men as mortal as frail as we are the bible shows us from this story among others that men can touch god and touch him in a way that radically changes the course of their destinies for good hallelujah ordinary men weak men frail men sometimes uneducated men sometimes men who have come from dangerous backgrounds the bible says men can touch god and that men can touch god in a way that can radically transform their lives transform their ministries transform their destinies a man can have a destiny defining encounter a man can have a life altering encounter when he touches god whether you look at abraham in the bible or isaac or jacob or moses or isaiah or gideon or David or Solomon or the apostles that were mentored directly by Jesus or blind Bartimeo one of these men who made up his mind thou son of David have mercy upon me 
the Bible says they shot the man and said, don't disturb Jesus. Jesus was passing Jericho for the last and final time. And the Bible says the man refused to keep quiet. He shouted and he touched Jesus so much. Jesus stopped. And he attended to blind Bartimaeus, and that was where he received his sight. How about Nicodemus in John chapter 3? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And even though a controversial Pharisee, he began to engage Jesus in an intelligent discussion. And Jesus, seeing the purity of his motive, began to respond to him. And it was that discussion between two of them that eventually led to John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world. It was not a sermon he was giving in a synagogue. It began as a discussion between Jesus and a man whose heart was determined to touch God. How about Paul the Apostle? A Pharisee of Pharisees. Received a mandate to go and destroy the program of God. And on his way to Damascus, a light came upon him. And that radically transformed him. Hallelujah. So the Bible is full of men and women who touched God in various regards. And for every one of these names aforementioned, the Bible tells us and leaves us with this note that their lives were not the same. Abraham was changed to Abraham. Remember? Isaac, Jacob changed to Israel. Moses became not just one who was to be a prince in Egypt, but became a prophet and a deliverer. Isaiah in chapter 6, when he encountered God, he was mandated and empowered again, even though a genuine prophet, to now represent the purposes of God. Weak Gideon, least in his father's house, least of the tribes, became a mighty warrior. David, the man after God's heart. No one else in the Bible had that title. How about Solomon? encountered the wisdom of God and his life changed became one of the wisest kings the apostles fruits of Jesus's own apostleship as weak and frail as they were most of them became mighty men including Thomas and Peter and then of course you know Paul later became the mighty apostle who wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament as recorded now, I want you to pay attention, please. We have established the fact that men can touch God. That as mighty, invisible, and in many instances, mysterious as God is, it is possible that men can touch him. But just to bring us to speed with our understanding, what does it mean to touch? What does it mean to touch God? I don't want to assume that we understand that. So I decided to write a, a, a thing or two about that expression, that word touch. To touch means to come in contact with. First definition. To touch means to come in contact with. Number two. To touch means to connect to. Let me repeat myself again so you can write. To touch means to come in contact with. Secondly, to touch means to connect to. The third definition is very beautiful. To touch means to produce feelings of affection and empathy. To produce feelings of affection and empathy. One last time. To touch means to come in contact with. Proximity enough to make contact. Number two. To touch means to connect to. Finally, to touch means to produce in the individual feelings of affection and empathy. And I want us to walk with the third definition as we explore this subject. So when the Bible talks about touching or touching Jesus, it is an attempt to describe something a man can do that can produce within him, being a man, the feelings of affection and sympathy and empathy are we together men can touch God and touch him in a way that radically alters their life the cause of their destinies for good the second point I want you to know tonight is that from this story the multitudes had access and they had proximity 
they even touched Jesus they made contact with him without any evident transformation please give us that scripture Luke chapter 8 now verse 45 I believe the multitudes now watch this and Jesus said who touched me when they denied Peter and all they that were with him said master the multitudes can you give us new King James so that we just escape some of these words these old English expressions oh dear can we find another version NIV let's try it for the purpose of our explanation NIV beautiful okay now he says who touched me Jesus asked and when they all denied it Peter said master the people are crowding and pressing against you beautiful expressions crowding and pressing against you you would think because there were many and they were touching Jesus something would happen to them absolutely nothing was happening to them now when you want to touch a man the first thing you need is proximity to that man am I right and when you get there you reach either by speaking by stretching your hands and all the people were doing exactly that yet it did not touch Jesus the multitudes had access the multitudes had proximity they even make contact with Jesus not the fake Jesus the real Jesus and yet there was no evident transformation in their lives my goodness so you can do correct activities physical contact with Jesus religiosity and correct activities does not equal having an encounter that produces transformation from a physical standpoint everything the people did was right that is exactly what it takes to touch a man yet there was no evident transformation and Jesus did not even bear record that they were touching him the multitudes had access there are many people today who have access to church they have access to the ministry of prayer they have access to Bibles they have access to teachings watch this now there are many people who have access to fasting programs there are many people who have access to powerful worship there are many people who have access to apostolic teaching pastoral evangelical prophetic platforms that is like having proximity coming so close and even reaching how many tapes do we have in our homes how many books do we have in our homes written by great men veterans of the gospel hallelujah how many Bibles do we have concordances all kinds of commentaries and references the Bible in its variety not to talk of e-versions that can afford you hundreds of different versions but there are many believers with this increasing spiritual activity the corresponding evident transformation that attests to the fact that you are meeting the God of the Bible is missing and absent in many lives who touched me how do you single a person in the midst of a crowd who one person touched me in the midst of a crowd just because multitudes are coming to church does not mean they are touching him just because many are involved in ministry does not mean they are touching him just because many are involved in spirituality in all its ramification listen if you were to mark those multitudes and those crowds i hope you know the same thing they did was the same thing the man who was crippled did and jesus called what that man did faith they tore the roof and tried to reach jesus and the man was healed but in this instance the crowd were pressing more so they, i believe they were talking or saying something and yet in the mind of jesus nobody was really making any profitable contact with him could this be why many times we pray sincerely and the power that should follow prayer does not speak in our lives could it be that this may be why sometimes we study scripture sincerely so but the light the illumination and the wisdom that should proceed from contact with the word is not evident in our lives the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth could this be why we fast could this be why we attend church sincerely but the corresponding transformation are we together now that attests to the fact because you see 
for Jesus to say who touched me like you'll be learning there are evidences something happened to him this one he was not given a word of knowledge something happened to him spiritually and physically he felt it as an evidence that he was touched the multitudes had access many multitudes today have access access to teachings access to men of god access to spiritual resources access to spiritual activities genuine spiritual activities but the activities in themselves do not guarantee evident transformation now there are clear write this down please there are clear unmistakable evidences when men touch god there are clear unmistakable evidences when men touch god and i'm going to run through a little list with you right now so that you will know clearly whether your spiritual activity as sincere as it is is really touching god and delivering to you that which is supposed to deliver or there may be a need to redirect your approach spiritually are we together there are clear unmistakable evidences when men touch God evidence number one how do you know that a man a church a ministry a man of God a family an individual how do you know that a man has truly touched God how do you know that God has become endeared to a man by reason of his press one the first proof that a man has really touched God is reverence and honor for God the first proof that a man has made contact with the God of the Bible many years ago I preached a profound message called the evidence of genuine intimacy with God and the first point I gave in that teaching is a revelation of the true state of your heart you know you have met the God of the Bible because your heart will be open before you like an x-ray are we together now the first evidence that you have met God is not power the first evidence that you have met God is not elevation the first evidence that you have met God according to Isaiah chapter 6 is a revelation of the true state of your heart leading to reverence and honor Do you believe that hmm. verse 47 same Luke 8 give it to us please Luke 8 47 watch this and the woman saw when Jesus said who touched me everybody was denying and the woman knowing look what has happened to her the first thing that happened to her was she knew that I cannot lie in his presence I've been touched something left him into me and if it is true that the person who touched me is grace and truth personified then that effect must happen in me and the Bible says when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling not fear reverence and falling down before him does that look like what the 20 and 4 elders do and she declared unto him before all the people what was the cause the reason why she touched him and how she was healed immediately let me tell you the truth when men touch god it alters something about the state of their heart it is impossible to meet the god of the bible and remain the same the version that met god is never the version that leaves his presence if you meet god and that same version left you met a demon spirit i assure you if it is the god of the bible no matter how stubborn you are something will happen when you see god in his glory you can choose to live in denial and ignore him but one thing is that your life will never be the same are we together when abraham had an encounter with the god of the bible something happened to him when jacob had an encounter with the god of the bible his name was was changed from jacob a cheat and a supplanter into israel the promise for 
thou what is your name and he said i am jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob but Israel, for as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. Touched the whole of his tie, blessed him, changed his name to Israel. The sun arose there and he called it Peniel, the face of God. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. How about Isaiah in chapter 6? Isaiah was a great prophet, mighty prophet, anointed prophet. Isaiah was not a fake prophet. He was a genuine prophet. The book of Isaiah begins with prophecy. And in chapter 6, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, verse 1, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord when he saw him high and lifted up. The Bible says the train of his robe filled the temple. When Isaiah saw the Lord, nobody told him anything by himself he said whoa i am undone i am a man of unclean lips and i dwell amidst a people of unclean lips that is not condemnation that is the convicting power of the presence of god and god didn't say you are being too harsh on yourself he said who shall we send and in fact one of the seraphs the bible says took a live coal not a cold one a live coal and touched his lips the instrument that he will use to prophesy to the nations and he said your iniquity this moment is taken away from you do you know if you had met isaiah in chapter one to five and said dear prophet do you know that there is iniquity in your heart that man will probably crucify you and say you are stupid for status let me even prophesy to you but by the time he encountered god that was not an issue of fake or real you don't have to be fake to need the help of God. The purifying power of God is for all men. Isaiah encounters the God of the Bible. And from the eyes of God's mercy and fire, a seraph takes a live coal and touches him and says, your iniquity is taken away and your sins purged. Then verse 8, I heard a voice saying, who shall I send? And who shall go for us? Isaiah, already a genuine prophet, preaching, prophesying. He now said, do you know what? Let's start ministry again. Here I am, send me. Isaiah would have been building branches called Koinonia. Isaiah would have been holding great conferences. And yet, while he was doing all of that, heaven was still saying, who shall we send? Can I tell you the truth? If you encounter the God of the Bible, you will love his presence more than ministry. You will love his presence more than reputation. You will love his presence more than title. Trying to give a good name and a good, those things will die immediately. The prophet said, whoa, I am undone. He said, I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. You never encounter the God of the Bible and the spirit of reverence and honor for him does not come upon you if you meet god the god of the bible and the only thing you walk out with is revelation something is questionable about your encounter the first thing that happens when men meet god is they die to themselves they die to their ambitions they die there is a level of brokenness 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 i think that should be psalm 51 and verse 17 did i get that right let's try it psalm 51 yes the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit is that in your bible a broken and a contrite heart oh god any man any man that encounters the god of the bible any man that touches god from what flows from him to you you cannot remain the same here i am in your presence do to me what you want i'm open before you lord do to me what you want here i am in your presence do to me what you want I'm open before you Lord this is a very powerful prayer in fact that, that's the part I want you to say again 
do to me what you want it's it's a it's a prayer it's a surrender do to me what you want forget that i'm a man of god i come as your child take away apostle and prophet take away whatever it is those titles can be interruptions to your having an encounter i am geo i am president when you come before god you take away your golden crowns and cry before your maker search my heart try my thoughts if there be any wicked way in me lead me to the way of the last day. let me tell you the truth when God stretches his hands and allows you to touch him the first thing that happens to you is that everything that is not him becomes threatened in your life immediately everything that is not him everything it dies a, a war a real warfare begins from within you you see you will never know how many luggages are there interrupting your flight in the spirit until he touches you when something flows from the god of the bible to you it's impossible to sleep and be at peace no you will find out that you don't even want to be among a crowd again you will walk alone like a madman it's a season of cont there, there is a pruning at that point you will not think of your titles again at that point you will not think of your accolades again it is the reason why we fast yet we don't receive anything because we don't use them as vehicles to touch him we use them as vehicles to create pride and accolades is the reason why we pray and as sincere as it is we don't touch him is the reason why we read sincerely and quote scripture yet the corresponding evident transformation does not follow who touched me there are evidences that follow men when God reaches down to touch you it is because like the seraphs he wants to roll away that iniquity he wants to roll away that sin from your life and bring you to a point where you are purified like gold purified like gold purified like gold is somebody learning tonight purified like gold let me tell you the truth your service is useless until the state of your heart is pure your service to god is useless until the state of your heart is pure your service will do not much to if you it doesn't matter how effective the service is until god finds a genuine vessel your service will be wanting number two very quickly there are clear unmistakable evidences when men meet god one is a revelation of the true state of your heart that leads to reverence and honor number two superior proof producing wisdom the second evidence when men touch god among the many things we have to see in their life is superior comma proof producing wisdom because there are different levels of wisdom there is wisdom earthly wisdom that just puffs up and does not produce results superior proof producing wisdom proverbs 9 and verse 10 i want us to shout this scripture together because the fear of the lord leads you somewhere it's like a vehicle are you ready one to read the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding so any wisdom that was not derived from the fear of the Lord is corrupted wisdom and it will destroy you. Are we together? That according to scripture, wisdom proceeds is like a river. It is the fear of the Lord that brings a man into correct wisdom because from the fruits of that wisdom, your heart will not be deceived by them because it was the fear of the Lord that led you to that place. When you try to access wisdom outside of the fear of the Lord, it will lead to pride, self-righteousness, and eventually self-destruction. The correct pathway is that it starts with the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. The fear of the Lord. Superior proof-producing wisdom. How do you know a man who has touched God? You will see wisdom beyond your age. 
wisdom beyond your level of education wisdom at a frequency at a dimension you don't have to be born again to see and know that this one is divine wisdom even as an unbeliever you see the outworkings the quality of the decisions the fruits of wisdom evident in the life of such a person you will know that that person has touched God number three what is the third proof that a man has touched God liberty hallelujah liberty liberty give us verse 43 of Luke 8 and then we jump to 48 liberty how do I know I have touched God liberty my God and the woman the Bible says she had an issue of blood how many years 12 years she was not a careless woman she made medical efforts to a point that she spent all her living she was a wise woman she had a savings account but that situation depleted her until everything went away she was sick she needed healing verse 48 and he said unto her daughter be of good comfort your faith has made you help me it never said your faith has healed you it gave her beyond healing liberty now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty liberty healing restoration matthew chapter 11 28 to 30 matthew chapter 11 as i'm speaking right now i know that the spirit of liberty is hovering around this place that there are people who have been here you've tried medicine just like this our dear woman you've tried everything as it is that diagnosis right now if god does not help you he may take your life or take your family there are people who are not sick but the trouble on your head is bet is better to be on admission in the hospital than to carry the kind of trouble that is on your head now there are people who will prefer to be on admission come on to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden read with me koinonia and i will give you rest 29 take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lonely in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light i tell you sincerely many of you what you are carrying on your head is a demon that put it there is not god the devil is just deceiving you that is god that is just what is a lie he said my burden is easy my yoke is easy the burden that is about to kill you is not of god it is the devil he has added his load gently and quietly on your head it's time for that load to go down I speak to you in the name of Jesus every tree that my father has not planted around your life that is stopping the purposes of God from finding expression the Lord brought you to church tonight so that you will be free I administer liberty upon you by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated how do you know you have touched God you will look for what caused you pain what is making you spend your money without profit? For that woman, it was the issue of blood. You may not have the issue of blood, you may, but you may. The thing that is common between her and every other person pressing Jesus is that they had issues. The issues had name. For someone, issue of blood. For you, it may be issue of finances. For another person, it may be issue of whatever. Liberty. You know that men have touched God because they walk away free. They go to him in chains, but they walk away free. The woman, after 12 years, she touched the hem of his garment and immediately that satanic, demonic issue of blood stopped. How about the woman who was bent for 18 years? Woman, you are loose from your infirmity and that moment that demonic satanic thing left listen to me don't waste his presence every time God shows up imagine a loving father stretching his hands and saying you have gone through enough don't don't allow this continue I'm reaching out to you hallelujah listen I've experienced the liberating power 
that encounters bring. Many of you do not know that when you meet God, you are supposed to be free. Most people don't know. They know they are supposed to not be the way that they came as at the time that they were before they met him. But for most people, they do not know that freedom and liberty is one of the benefits, the proof that you have met him. That woman made up her mind and said, I do not have access to him. I'm not part of his inner circle. Like I shared with you last week, it is not in his schedule to touch me, but a combination of holy anger and hunger pushed that woman and everybody was touching whatever they would touch. She touched him sincerely. How do you know that that touch has happened? Because a destiny helper that has no business calling you suddenly calls you and said, I had a dream yesterday night, never knowing that you were praying through the night and say, God, is this how my life will continue? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God can touch men, but men can touch God. I'm not telling you what happens when God touches men. I'm telling you what happens when men reach. If that woman was waiting for Jesus to touch her, she would have waited there forever. The most important thing is that there should be a contact. When men touch God, everything that is not by God, from God, has to give way. When men touch God, I want you as you are seated here, I know that the Spirit of God is moving, but you just imagine that you are that woman with the issue of blood and imagine that Galilean full of strange power passing you are already declared unclean so you don't have access to come into the city to touch him but since you could not reach him he has come this close don't waste that opportunity through pride the woman reached and she touched him a man of can touch God and his grace can rest on your ministry it becomes evident that you have touched God. Your preaching will change, not by the sounds, <laughs> but the life that is transmuted through your speakings. You know those who are willing to look beyond the crowd, look beyond their pain. Losing blood is losing life. That woman was already weak. She had every excuse to sit down there and say a compassionate Jesus should come to me what she said if I may but touch she said to herself I don't have the power to heal myself but I can reach I can come to God and say my financial situation is going to kill me if you don't help me I can come to God and say the husband that I have in my home right now if you don't help me is going to tear this marriage into pieces you can come to God. Can I tell you? Don't wait till you are healed before you come to him. He's the only one who can heal. You come to him with that issue. You don't wait till you are healed. Then you come to give thanks. He's the one you thank. But he's the one who heals you. Number four. What is the fourth evidence? The fourth unmistakable evidence that men, a man, including you, has touched God. Genuine power. The fourth evidence that you have touched God is that you receive from him an unction that transforms your life and then from you transforms the nations. Did you hear what I said? Genuine power. You receive from him an unction that first transforms your life and then from you transforms the nations. Verse 46, same Luke chapter 8. Let's hurry up. And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, not by word of knowledge, for I perceive that virtue, glory, power, Unction has gone out of me. My God, I perceive people were touching me. The reason why I know they did not touch me 
even though they were making contact, was that nothing was leaving me to them. I came full and left full. Nobody placed a demand, but a woman who never attended his services, a woman who never had the opportunity to sit under his teaching because of her situation, she reached out by faith and unction, glory, power, left God. Do you know, I submit to you, I understand this thing that Jesus has said. This statement, I understand it. If you really walk in the anointing, you will understand what Jesus said. You can literally, you know how you draw a drink from a straw and watch that drink? You put a straw into um, some container huh? and then you draw and you see it rising and it's reducing in the cup and entering your mouth. That's what Jesus was saying. You can feel unction leaving you. Not like it's killing you, but it's like a deposit for the people. You know when they are drawing it. I've gone to meetings where way before I entered the auditorium, you could sense a pool. You could sense hunger. You, you know that the people came to receive. There are times that you know that just a handful of people, people were just there for the ceremony, but the hunger to receive was not there. I've prayed for people and sometimes sincerely, of course, I just believe by faith, but you know that something that was supposed to come out from you did not come out to them. And there are others, sometimes you are passing, you even have to turn and like Jesus said, who touched me? They did not make contact, but the, right from that distance, I never make contact one-on-one -on -one with Reinhard Bonke, but my God, ask God and ask him, something left evidently from that crusade ground and landed on this head you are seeing who touched me does not mean who made physical contact with me who was hungry enough to discern what i carry you see you have to discern the bible says he that cometh unto god must believe that he is to discern how can god be passing and he passes my problem and acts like he did not see it it is very typical of God to act as if he did not see it. Blind Bartimeo cried. This woman cried. Jarius, the centurion, cried. Don't keep quiet and just assume that after all, he knows all things. He knows my family problem. The devil will tear your life into pieces. You cry, thou son of David, if I can't touch you, I can shout to your ears. Do you believe what you are hearing? Power. There is no man that touches God and nothing leaves God and enters your spirit. Genuine, authentic power. Power that produces results. Reminded of my experiences with him. My God, when his majesty reached into my room, light at his brilliance. This one, it was not me that touched him. Oh, maybe I touched him with hunger. My encounter was purely a product of mercy. But when he stretched that majestic hand towards me, it's like connecting a man to high voltage electricity. Every part of you from head to toe resonating at the frequency of that power. Listen, genuine power is not just by talking and making noise. If you have an encounter with the God of the Bible, except you, you met a demon. Power that transforms who touched me I sense that virtue has left me who touched me who placed a demand on the healing anointing who placed a demand on the spirit of wisdom who placed a demand on the grace for signs and wonders who placed a demand on the grace for influence who placed a demand on the hear ye him anointing who placed a demand for grace for wealth and abundance who placed a demand on the spirit of wisdom and revelation he said, who touched me? You know that you have touched him because something leaves him to your spirit. Listen. When Solomon touched God in that encounter, I hope you know it was a dream. If you were Solomon's roommate, you would get up in the morning and say, good morning, sir. Not knowing the man that slept is not the same man that woke up. Something had come upon his life. I hope you believe what you are hearing. 
you want to take the nations for Jesus you want to do mighty things for the kingdom ladies and gentlemen please hear me it is going to take beyond your zeal there is an ability that only God has, is the ultimate custodian but he can give it to men my God in ancient times when you study classical Greek mythology they believe that people Zeus and Hermes were Greek gods and that they were part of these alien deities that came and met with the daughters of men and so they gave birth to human beings that were half human beings and half extraterrestrials carrying you know they were not ordinary human beings so when they saw Paul and Silas they saw the mighty things they were doing they said no you are not normal you are a human being and something else you are Zeus and Hermes there is something God can do in a man that you will be as ordinary as you look but the power that emanates from you it will make people say what is this God for you who touched me who received power from me I believe in the power of God I will be wasting your time without the power of God you will sympathize with people eternally without transformation if you don't have power if the only thing you have is a salmon you will propose things without the ability to make it happen God can heal nobody gets healed God can lift nobody gets healed receive God no nothing will happen it takes power how about wicked spirits that have vowed that they will not let your destiny go say unto God how terrible art thou in thy work Psalm 63 Huh? it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves for as long as the lion has refused to roar any animal can claim to be the king of the jungle and while they are shouting it the lion keeps quiet until it is hungry when the lion is hungry it comes with an attitude of no fear and roars across that jungle Do you believe this let me tell you the truth the church is not as weak as it looks believers are not as weak as they look there is a momentum building in the spirit it's not a momentum of pride but it's building in the spirit the church is gradually evolving slowly but surely to a place where there will be it's, it's like a, a a breaking point will soon be hit in the church and you will see manifestations of apostolic power like we have never seen before i hope we have the grace to believe it when we see it because you will see raising the dead it will happen like healing headache you will see manifestations ordinary people I believe this I believe this that someone will come and tell you I'm about to be put in prison why because I'm owing 50 million naira and, and I'm sincere I've asked God for forgiveness and you say father in the name of Jesus let a destiny help I help this man and right in the presence of that man somebody who has no business helping him will come and say I was instructed by God go and find out how men like John Lake went to Spokane some of those people were led by God they had no money no nothing and before they arrived God had instructed men to wait was it not in your Bible that Elijah was living like a madman if you were in Bible days you would call Elijah irresponsible yet it was God that told him carry nothing and be on your way I've commanded a widow and when he met the woman she never sounded like she was commanded can I tell you the truth there are people who God has already commanded many they have been commanded to make sure you don't cry your assignment is to agree with God so that they will hear what he has said because he has spoken but you must echo it they hear twice he's spoken once it is your responsibility to make them hear the second time i have spoken once but you are here to, you have heard twice that power belongs to the lord hallelujah for many of you help has not arisen because you don't know the true function of power the true function of power is not falling down and standing up no the true function of power is influencing changes in your life compelling compliance correcting anomalies 
I'd like you to pray one prayer. I think it was Kenny or Isaac when he came up here. He prayed a prayer for grace. Once you are there, say, Father, multiply grace. Let your power rest upon my life. Tired of living a powerless Christian experience. Someone pray. Tired of powerless worship. Powerless preaching. Powerless teaching. Powerless business. Powerless entrepreneurship. Tired of powerlessness. By grace, by your spirit. Let genuine spiritual power. The power that transforms. Let fetch you from the throne. Flow into this frail body. This frail ministry. This frail business. This frail destiny. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Something is happening to you now. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. One more time. Let it flow, let it flow. Uh. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow right here, right now. Hallelujah. Please listen, my dear people. When men touch God, something happens to the state of their hearts producing genuine reverence and honor to God when men touch God they find as a fruit of that encounter superior proof producing wisdom when men touch God they find liberty liberty that is clear unmistakable when men touch God they access genuine power power to change their generation power to influence outcomes correct anomalies establish realities finally when men touch God they encounter peace verse 48 please sit down verse 48 of Luke chapter 4 Hi. God is speaking to someone speaking to someone I'm sensing this thing in my spirit God is speaking to someone you need to find peace you need to find peace listen there is rest in peace but there is go in peace rest in peace we use it for dead people but go in peace is for people who are alive but are almost dead because of the kinds of trouble when you say rest in peace generally is for someone who has died and you are just saying rest in peace hoping that the person died in Christ but Jesus did not tell a dead woman he told a woman who had a dead condition but she was alive his final charge to her was go in peace do you know why that statement was powerful if Jesus left that woman to go without speaking peace to her, she would still not be in she would still not she would still have a lot of trouble because she was going to now go back to people who had not seen her for a long time. The controversy that will surround her arrival, the benefit of her healing will not even be evident because they will know her. They knew her yesterday as an unclean person. Suddenly she shows up and says he healed me. Was it verified medically? Are you stupid? The trouble that will surround her life alone, he needed to send her with peace. Peace. When men encounter God, John 14, 27, Jesus said, peace, I live with you. Are you seeing it, believers? 
You need to know what Jesus left with us. He did not just leave the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit truly, but you left peace. You ignored it, thinking it's not important. Peace, I live with you in this wicked world. You need this, oh. You need this more than money. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, he says. Give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled. This is what will happen to you when you don't have peace. Trouble and fear. You will live perpetually. Trouble over nothing and fear. People are dying. Your heart is palpitating. There are many people today who have died because of lack of peace than actual sickness. Are we together? Especially as you grow older, somehow Satan has programmed this system such that the older you grow, you lose touch of genuine peace. And so you can see young people roam around because they are largely in ignorance. But you see old people sit down and they fear everything. Someone will just sit down and carry a, a BP monitor and see that your BP has gone to the roof. Why is it going there? I just feel like somebody is about to die. This one is not like God is giving you an information. It's just the devil playing with your mind. Peace. Someone say peace. peace. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. Philippians 4 and verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, it says it shall keep your heart and mind, keep your spirit and keep your thinking through Jesus Christ. The troubles in this world are many. And let me tell you, if you don't have the peace of God, the devil does not need to kill you. By yourself, you will find out that you can go and fall down in a well and die. So, the rate of suicide has increased. Are we together? Increase in school fees. Increase in everything. Increase in fare, gas price, travel fee whatever it is and when you think about this sometimes you look at your children running around you look at everything you look at your relatives and you find out you are the only one taking care of 22 people and then the little money you have an arm robber meets you at the atm and says remove everything quietly and give it to me at the end of it you can go and sit down at home and literally have high blood pressure and die there are many people today not just an african thing i tell you do you know that the world today is full of sad people and people cannot they can't smile they can't rejoice what happened they say i don't know the devil is just after my life they may be right but anger does not drive him your sadness and frowning your face does not drive him why are you like this i've noticed that people don't like me he first started from my village but now it's everywhere someone say peace You must learn to have the peace of God. If you are in ministry, let me give you an honest counsel. If you don't have peace, you may not let, live long. Hallelujah. Bills, rent, criticisms, all kinds of things. If you don't have peace, you will not sleep. You will literally die from worry and lack of sleep. Then your children now come. Then your spouse now come. Then all the troubles in society. They promise you an appointment. They call you the night before and say, get ready. Put all your files together. Just be watching NTA or, or um, what's it, all the other channels. And you watch from morning till night only to see in, in the newspaper they are congratulating someone else. And they say at the 11th hour, they change your name. And you will sit down there and say, so this last one that was supposed to be a manifestation of God's faithfulness. This is how my life will be. Let me go and take poison. Or let me get a rope and hang myself. I have always wondered how people hang themselves. The pain of hanging yourself. You don't need to, you don't need experience. You just need intelligence. And yet people still do it. Let me tell you the truth. If you've never gone through certain things in life, you will not understand the value of peace. There are, if, if money could on its own buy peace, many rich people will not die. This thing called peace. When God gives you peace, embrace it and receive it, protect it. It's better to throw away your documents and carry peace in order of priority. Hallelujah. 
days. You measure my blood pressure today, you think they gave birth to me last week. I tell you, to the glory of God. This is God's ministry. I am his property, not even just his vessel, his whole property, everything. Find peace. I'm speaking to someone. I know that the rent is due, but find peace. Did you hear what I said? I know your son is not performing well in school, but find peace. I know the ministry does not have support. Things are happening. Find peace. I know your marriage is having some issues. Find peace. Find peace first. When you find peace, a solution can come. Do you know one thing I like about that woman? Even though she had spent her money on physicians, she had every right to be angry. You do not see any display of anger or rage or emotions. No. For a woman who has been 12 years in trouble, she had every right to be angry with anybody. If it was that woman, she would have been insulted some of them and said, get out of the way. You guys don't have the issue of blood. You have no idea what I'm going through. Clear the way for me. Let Jesus heal me before he attends to your nonsense. The way she was able to stay calm and rejoice, I believe it was one of the keys that helped her to touch Jesus. And it was one of the things she got more of after she touched him. Let me charge you. Place your hand on your chest and speak peace to yourself. Say myself. Find peace. One more time. Say myself. Find peace. You may not understand what you are doing, but you just place your hand. Say myself. Find peace. That waking up in the night that is already killing you. You are 21 years old and everybody is asking you if you are 40. You are tired of explaining to people that I'm not that old. They say, so why are you like this? Lack of peace. Peace has added almost 20 years to your life. Return that 20 years to the peace and say, I'm a young person. I will grow gradually. I can't be having the stress of an old man at 25, at 30, at 40, 45. My grandfather is awake. My father is awake. Me too, I'm awake. Let me give you an honest advice, a fatherly advice, a prophetic advice, an apostolic advice, a friendly advice. If you let the problems in this life bar, they will send you to your grave and life will still continue. Did you hear what I said? There are times you need to look at the storms and just say, do your worst. Get a chair and sit quietly. Did you hear what I said? Because life has a way of bullying you. And when Satan sees that you are threatened by life, he will magnify things beyond their proportion and surround you with it. There are young people who talk to themselves now as, as if they have a brain problem. Till they drive by themselves to a ditch. You will see a young man discussing on his own. He's looking at you. His hand is calculating this thing. Five plus seven. Eighteen. And you are watching him from a distance. This guy was not born that way. Life for you. I'm speaking to everybody here. Especially dear brothers. Let me tell you the truth. Don't I know that it's good to be responsible. Do your best. But while you are driving. As the rent issue slap you on your face. As the bills slap you on your face. And as people are passing comments and saying you are not irresponsible. Don't worry. You didn't send your, your son to school. He's owing two years in some um, college or university, one state. You have, you don't have, let me tell you the truth. Make up your mind and hear me. Find peace. You can't pay the rent of the ministry, the auditorium. You are in trouble. Are you going to pack up the church? The elders in your, in, will come and meet you and say, did God call you? I'm not saying you are fake, but were you called? And you know, human beings know how to add, we call it in Africa, adding pepper and um, adding uh, whatever it is. It looks like this one that you've been, you've not been, your mother and father have not been happy. Are you sure that you didn't offend God? That's what they told Job. And Job said, ah, 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 don't be hasty. I will be still. Listen. Let me tell you this. Hold on before we sing. I was teaching at the uh, uh, workers retreat and I was sharing with them some of the things that we've gone through in our little lives. I'm a young man who 
but there's a way life will give you gray hair because of the things you've gone through did you hear what i said i've lived many lives in my life many lives there is nothing that is as bad as his looks provided you can sleep and wake up believe me storms will pass just trust me when i'm to ministry storms marital storms financial storms as they are coming be waving them because there is a law there is a law it passes with time passes with time meaning you are crying today but you will soon laugh you will soon rejoice meaning you don't have a child today but begin to rejoice because all those clothes you bought will not be in vain living children will wear all of them are we together yeah that garage you have seen in your mind will not remain empty one day an honorable car will be inside yes sir there are things you need to know about storms and challenges in life honestly they come they have an ability to bully you like they will not pass but they will pass what has nigeria not gone through hey it's nigerians what have we not gone through are you still alive are you still strong did you still celebrate your birthday you think you will not celebrate another one it will come and pass believe me believe me believe me what has your company not gone through what has your ministry not gone through what has whatever it is remember i remember those days when we we're owing money from our crusade if you ever told me these days will come i'll believe by faith but they look far here are the days one day we'll be in a building of our own and we'll forget that there was ever anything like building project it will come to pass you will not be a tenant forever just know that Apostle, as I'm speaking now, my landlord has even sent me a text in church. Don't worry. Your landlord is not, a, he's not, he's not an angel. He's a human being. No matter what happens, he will come out of it. Did you hear what I said? I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you. I just felt like ministering this to someone particularly to people who are going through health and financial storms these two storms these storms bar they don't have anybody as a partner when you are going through it there may be people around you but these storms are so personal you will stay there and that boat is rocking with you alone there and you have to believe God but I'm telling you this you will come out of it it will come out of it. It will come out of it. Hallelujah. So the clear, unmistakable evidence when a man touches God is one, reverence and honor. Two, superior proof producing wisdom. Three, liberty in all its ramifications. Four, genuine power, access to life transforming power. Five, peace. Peace. 